Hello everybody, my name is Liam Walken, and today we will be completely transforming this bathroom from this into this. And here is how we did it. As always, to begin, we're going to take out this toilet, and to do this, we're going to first shut off water, and then drain what's left of it. So, taking the shot back, getting rid of the filter, so we don't want to destroy it, and then sucking out both the bowl and the tank, that way the toilet's all dry. We can take out these bolts here, and just lift the toilet out of place. I like to put it in a garbage bag so it doesn't drip as we move it downstairs. And then cleaning up the flange here. Got some disgusting old wax, just gotta get rid of that. And we're just going to shove a rag into the hole here. That way no sewer gas can come up. Got this giant mirror to remove. It was kind of held in place with some trim and a little bit of glue behind it. Typically there's more, but not in this case. So just tape it up and then kind of just pry it off that wall there. Now before removing the countertop and vanity, we have to disconnect the plumbing from it. And in our case, we're just going to go ahead and cut away the old drain. It's just always disgusting. Uh, we can replace it with the proper stuff here, so it's a little nicer that way. Just a sawzel with a fine tooth blade, and then we want to cap it off that way no sewer gas comes out. And then the water lines too, we're going to disconnect those. And again, the water is off at this point, just a reminder. And for the rest of the vanity, we're going to start by just cutting the caulking around the top there, lifting it out of place, and then there's usually just a few screws holding these base cabinets together and a couple holding it into the wall. So you can just take all those out and then just carry everything on out. Removing this glass enclosure was a little bit tricky. The door and side panel here came out easy enough. Couple screws, some silicone cut away, it's out. But this larger piece, there was a big channel that it was kind of slid into up top and it was all full of silicone. So we did have to remove some of the tile and drywall in order to get this thing out. We could have of course taken the hammer to it, but that just would have created a real mess. For removing the tile here, we like the three foot pry bar, has a lot of leverage and weight behind it, so we just kind of create these horizontal seams that you can see, and then we just take both the tile and the backer it's attached to, and just shake it loose from the wall. We just kind of want to get those fasteners out, and that way we can get it out in bigger chunks, it's just a lot easier and cleaner that way. A big goal for these projects is to get the water back on ASAP. Reason being is it seems like everyone but us is working from home these days. So here we had the old shutoffs for the vanity, and we're gonna go ahead and replace them as all shutoffs just need to be replaced in these projects. They suck, they're ticking time bombs, so we're gonna go ahead, cut the lines, we're gonna clean up with some emery cloth, ream both the in and outside of these pipes, mark the depth here for our shark bites, and on one of them we're gonna cap it, on the other we're gonna put a new shutoff, that way we have a source of water for the duration of this project. This jacuzzi style tub came with these side panels, which made our lives a lot easier. And before getting this out, we do have to disconnect the plumbing. So the drain, overflow, and water lines. And then for the motor behind it as well, electrical lines. So we just went ahead, capped that, and then we could just lift it out of place. And for the shower pan over here, I just took a hammer, so it was right there, kind of smashed it out. Uh, you know, a sawzel would be a little more appropriate, I suppose, but hey, it got the job done. You can see we have a fan set up in the window that's just blowing a lot of the dust out of this space, kind of keeping the project and the house a little bit cleaner here. And then we take a multi-tool and run it along the top of where all this tile ends. That way we can again just shake both of the drywall and tile loose from the wall and get it out in nice clean chunks. Demoing this floor was incredibly easy. The stuff came up like carpet. It was fantastic. Uh, unfortunately, this was a big part of the reason why this renovation happened, because it was done so poorly. The tiles were cracking, all of the grout was falling out, just a really badly done initial install. But of course, for demo, it makes our lives a whole lot easier. Just taking the pry bar, getting it underneath both the tile and the lath, and we can just kind of lift it up and very light work with this floor. For the tub installation, we start with the template. So this is the same cardboard that that tub came in. We're just going to take it and trace the outline of the top of the tub as it's the widest point. Then I'm going to go ahead and just cut that out and mark the drain location. This tub has a center drain, so it's really simple. We're just going to put a little hole in the center. And then we can take this into the bathroom and get a feel for the space. 
we can start to kind of figure out where to put it, how far from the glass of the shower, how it's going to look with the clearance needed for the toilet, and most importantly, figure out where our tub filler needs to go. It's very important with the tub filler to have the right spacing so that, you know, as the water is on, it lands in the tub. We then opened up the subfloor here so that one, all of the plumbing could be relocated as needed, and two, so that we could recess the shower area for our curbless shower design. And Sebastian just taking these 2x4s here, gluing and nailing them into the existing joists, just recessed down at the same depth as the thickness of our subfloor, in this case call it 3 quarters of an inch. That way, the top of our new subfloor will be flush with the top of those joists. Cleaning this existing wall up a little bit more, just going to take away some of that drywall and then a lot of this wood that was in here, we're just going to remove that to make space for our new plumbing and then put in some backing for the rain head, the handheld, the shower valve, all the fun new toys that are coming in. After Mario Luigi did their thing with the plumbing, we went ahead and carried on. This is the very rough framing for the niche. Reason I say that is we don't actually put our niche in until after the first wall tile is done. That way we have an established grout line to run smoothly through either the top or bottom of our niche. And the opening here, if our niche is only 12 inches tall, let's say, we might make our opening 20 inches, so giving us a lot of wiggle room. And speaking of which, we're going to put some accent lighting in our niche here, and in order to do so, we need to power it. So this here is 182, just a low voltage cable, as it will be a 24 volt LED light strip going in there, so we're going to take the cable from the vanity, run it through that wall, fish it underneath the joist, and then bring it up, and just leave it in that rough opening. And just to kind of go back over that, so you can see this brown cable here, that's our 18-2, it's just ran down this stud space, ran under the joist, and then brought through that wall, and left sticking out where the vanity will go. Eventually we're going to put a 120 volt to 24 DC line driver in there. We're going to take that roll mix, that 14-2 you see, run it from the same spot. It's going to go up. We made a little hole to get through that top plate in the stud cavity here. And then that's going to come out into the attic space where we're going to have a pot light. That way, when you flip the switch on, power up those pot lights, it's going to send 120 volt down to that driver. So when the pot lights come on, the accent light will come on as well. We do have a few things to do in the attic, so before doing that, I'm going to remove all of the blown-in insulation from above these areas. We don't want it raining down making a mess. And then after that, we can cut out the new fan. So here we're using the Panasonic Whisper fan with the Fitz flush mount cover for that. So we're going to cut open the opening here with a multi-tool and then take these self-drilling screws and attach the Fitz flush mount cover to the Panasonic fan. Just going to screw four times, get it nice and square with the fan, and then we can take some tuck tape here and just kind of go along the edges and make it airtight. And to mount this thing, we're going to put some wood backing above each of the sides here on the drywall. So we're going to take some drywall screws and fasten that all together. And then you can just see briefly on the left side there, there's an insulated duct hanging down. So I'm up above as Sebastian kind of fastens this fan up into place. I'm hooking up both the duct work and the electrical to this thing. And with that, we could repair the vapor barrier using some staples and tuck tape to do so, getting some new drywall up, and then I could stay up there in my newfound home and just re-insulate. And closing up the absolute hazard that this open floor was, so just getting some backing here underneath the existing plywood, and that's what's going to allow us to kind of get our new piece of plywood in here, get them all screwed together. We got a whole bunch of subfloor glue as well as flooring screws, and we're going to drill out both the hole for our water lines for the tub filler, as well as the 5 inch hole here for our tub drain. And very similar for the shower side, just getting our new strips of subfloor in. We're going to go ahead, glue, screw, slide it all into place there. And then anywhere, the existing floor as well, we like to kind of mark out the joists. You get a whole bunch of flooring screws down to prevent any future squeaks, as last thing you want is to do all this work and have a squeaky floor.
framing out a little corner bench here. Now this shower I believe was maybe 38 by 4 feet in size, so we didn't want to take up too much floor space. So this bench here measuring to be 18 tall, 12 deep, 30 wide, somewhere in that ballpark. A little bit of a pitch on that top for water slope. And when it comes to benches, honestly, I think I'm more of a shower stool kind of guy. I like the versatility they provide, but I also completely understand wanting the aesthetic and sort of the solidness that a fixed bench like this provides. Just something to consider, you know, look at both of your options and see which style is better suited for your needs. Getting in some Rockwell Safe and Sound to help dampen uh, the, the sound in this space. Really nice stuff, especially when you have shared walls like this one here. Uh, and as good as it is, and as much as I would recommend this stuff, it also really sucks to install. Incredibly itchy stuff, so you can see I got the full suit on for this install. And just, just trying to get it done with, so that I don't have to rock the itch for too long. This is a four foot by four foot Schluter Curdy shower pan. So it comes with all the slope already built in. So I'm just gonna go ahead, take this circular saw here and just kind of mark it out and cut this pan to size for the opening that we'd previously kind of framed for it. And then with that, we can start doing the walls. So taking the Curdy board here, it comes in half inch, four foot by eight foot sheets, very similar to drywall, except, you know, a fraction of the weight and about 10 times the price. Very fun stuff, but it is a great material. Uh, I really do love working with it. I, I think it's a great product. Uh, it's very easy to install and just taking kind of the washers that you can buy with them and then just fastening it into all of the framing. Installing new half inch green board everywhere and go figure the previous tile was a little bit over four foot. So we were left with an unfortunate gap at the bottom there. And we would have done this in a different way had we had to finish it nicely, but we're tiling all of these walls so that that gap there will be covered with tiles. So we're just going to take some drywall and kind of cut it into a little little slice to fill those spots, but not worry about doing a nice job with mudding and finishing it down there. Real doozy with the floor here. Big, big uh, gap there. So that last joist was just so out of whack and in order to level this it would be a real pain uh, if, you, if you want to do this traditional way with the self leveling underlayment as it's just so much you would have to do to raise the bathroom floor to that height but what we're doing here because we are doing a Kerbal shower we needed to raise the, the bathroom floor height a bit anyways so this is quarter inch ply we're just gluing and stapling it all down and then on top of this we're going to be putting Ditra uh, just peel and stick. It's quarter inch thick as well. So that gives us a total of half inch. And this way we just don't do that, that raised spot over there. And this way we can kind of screed out later on and just kind of flush out the height and joist at the end there with the rest of the floor and get a nice flat floor. So it did work out. And what we're doing here, just cleaning up the new plywood, dampening it, and then just good vacuum. And then this here is the Dietra peel and stick. So we just kind of cut it to size with a knife peel off that plastic backing and then stick it down and take sort of this uh, weighted floor wheel here just kind of roll out the floor as this is a pressure activated adhesive so just by going over it we're going to get a real nice tight bond great product again this makes for an incredibly easy install To finish with the waterproofing, we are using Schluter's All Set Thin Set for this. It is expensive, so we do only use it for the waterproofing, but we want to make sure that when it comes to this, we're doing a good job, and there is a big difference between this and other thin sets. So mixing this up, we got the whale tail attachment on the vacuum, you might have seen there, the little blue guy, which controls the dust as we're mixing this indoors. Canadian winters means no fun mixing outdoors, it's just more convenient to make it in your space, your project space here. And we're just going to be using this curdy band to go over any of the seams and screw holes. And we're using the curdy trowel to kind of get that thin set in the wall. We're just combing it out and we're going to apply the banding and then smooth it down with a six, five inch, four inch drywall knife, whatever you may have that you can use for this. We're going to go over all of the corners and on any inside or outside corners, they do make inside and outside corners that you can use. So we make use of those as well. 
I think if you are a beginner and you're considering doing your own bathroom, I would highly suggest using the curdy board method as we're doing here. They do make the full sheets as well, which you can put over a different backer, but it is so much more work. Sure, the curdy board's a little more expensive, but it's well worth it in my opinion. This just made for a really easy install. For the shower pan, we're going to vacuum it up and then dampen it with a sponge so that the moisture doesn't get pulled out of all the thin set here. And then down below in our trap, we do have the tailpiece already cut to size, which will attach the curdy drain. So that's glued in position. We're going to comb this out with a quarter inch trowel, get that kind of foam spacer in, and then apply the ABS cement to both ends here, and then get that drain into position. And then get the pan into the space here, compress it down nicely, and then carrying on with the waterproofing. Again, it's just more curdy banding. We're getting it in every single corner, every seam where it meets that Ditra. The Ditra is already waterproof, so we can just connect the pan to the Ditra, that orange comb stuff you see, and we just have a completely watertight space here. And as mentioned, just kind of here screening off some leftover all set to kind of fill the, the gap between the Ditra and that raised section there. Consider putting on some lath or something to help strengthen this here, but the all set is rated for direct bonding to subfloor, so I thought for such a small space like this one, it would be okay. This is the OSMB Island tub drain. Beautiful thing. A little bit expensive, but that's okay. And all we're doing here is we're going to reduce the 2 inch that it comes with to inch and a half. And then we have our five inch hole there that we drilled out previously and the traps just below. We're going to measure the distance from this system to the trap, cut a little piece of ABS to size, glue it in to both ends, and then we can kind of screw this piece down to the subfloor using these flooring screws. Sebastian going to town with all the drywall work, so a lot of pre-filling here using sheetrock 20 that is just hot mud he mixes up in the pan fills any of the larger gaps and cracks and then after that use various different compounds and tapes depending on the situation i don't really know what he does it's kind of magic to me you know this joint here nice ugly ones like this using the fiba fuse it has a nice big roll to it really handy for for uglier joints like this one where the old drywall meets new taking some mesh tape here around the fits cover as well as that small little patch there to help strengthen everything once again, a little more pre-fill action here. I do know anywhere he's using paper tape, he does like the all-purpose here in Canada. That is the green box of mud. And then for all of the next coats after that, he's using machine mud. Comes in an orange, amber, yellow box here. You can see just doing various coats here, feathering this all out, and it came out beautiful. Onto the floors, and man, do I hate this part. I think floor day is my least favorite. There's just something about it. Um, you know, I love tiling walls, but floors, it's, I kind of feel like a pig rolling around in thin set. That's probably just a me problem. I, you know, I am very messy as I work. Um, also, you know, the knees too take a beating. Wear knee pads as we're doing it, but that only helps so much. But anyways, uh, it's just a little, little fun information here. We're using 1 16th grout joints as always. If you are a beginner, you might consider 1 8th. A little more play, a little easier to work with, but we are we are doing 1 16th here. It's just nicer, less grout, you know. Using the wedge style system to get rid of any lippage. Using Mape Carabon T thin set in white. I do much prefer the white thin set to gray. Just looks cleaner, especially when you like to wear it like I do. And uh, we're using a half inch square notch trowel to set all this back buttering each and every piece, of course, and just kind of working our way out of the bathroom so that we can go home and reflect on our life choices.
Sebastian had been talking about these fest tools forever and he finally showed up with them and I could not believe how good these things are. Just no dust at all. Just the more we, we do this kind of stuff, it's fine. We're just switching over to everything being German made. They, those guys, I tell you, they know what they're doing over there. More niche activities here. This is just a kind of a corner track for drywall as its original purpose, but we will be using it to house our accent lighting in the niche. Comes with a diffuser made specifically for it, which is nice. And we're just going to make a little one inch hole in the corner of the niche there. So we put the tile backing into the niche so that we could kind of get our distance to drill that hole for. And then here we're taking the LED tape light. Here are the specs for it, as you can see. With these tape lights, traditionally, they will have pre-soldered on ends to them. That's going to make your installation really easy. And then we're just going to kind of hold it out to the length of the niche and cut it to size. They come with these little points where you're able to cut it. And then boom, that's kind of it for prep. At the same time, I'm just going to go ahead and install the backing for this niche. We're doing a little accent piece here. Same mosaic that's on the floor will go in the niche. So we can just install it now and just put it all in as one piece. Installing the shower floor, just the nice little hexagon mosaic. So just using a V-notch trowel, getting all that thin set down, getting that drain in first, just a nice brushed nickel finish here. And I can just lay these sheets in, not too worried about the edges where it meets wall as that will all be covered with wall tile. And then using the little red wedges to kind of make sure we don't have any inconsistencies in the spacing between our sheets here. Starting the tiling with this wall here, and we're using a laser level for that first row of tile. It is crucial that first row is perfect. If you're off by even a little, what happens is as you work your way up, that imperfection will grow and grow until it's sizable and very noticeable. So it needs to be perfect. We're doing this wall here. We started off with a half cut of tile. Reason being is that way when we get to the shower wall, instead of having a potential sliver cut at the top of our shower, we can end with a half tile similar to how we started with a half tile. And with that wall being done, we could kind of run a laser level through it. And this way we establish where our grout line will be. We can cut out the opening for our niche here. And this way we can just have that grout line kind of flow through the top, I believe, of this niche here. You see, we just cut that out with a multi-tool and then just fastened it in there, poked our low voltage wire out for the lighting. For the niche here, we're going to start by just siliconing the track in for our LED lights. We're just going to get that into position and we just want to make sure that we're still able to move that low voltage wire up and down freely. Very important step right there. And then for any of these side top and bottom pieces, I just like to take huge globs of thin set for these and just get them in place and just squish them until all the thin set comes pushing out. And, and that way I can just push it down further and further, more thin set comes out, wipe it away until it's in a position that I'm happy with. I take these profiles, miter them on a chop saw, and then use the red wedges to get everything nice and tight. Some gaps in the corners, and that's what we'll be filling with the color matched silicone. 
For the bench here, you'll notice that although it looks like six pieces of tile, it's actually just three. It's just easier to work with this way. So instead of fully cutting that tile with the wet saw, I just kind of notched the top of it to give a fake looking grout line. It's just easier to work with three pieces of tile than six. That's all. And then with the top of the bench here, just using this engineered stone to get on top there, making sure we have pitch so that any water on it still makes its way to the drain and then just thin setting that into place. At some point, we must have primed. We used Sherwin-Williams Cover Max, although I guess we didn't get any footage of it. And after priming, you know, that kind of reveals more imperfections. So Sebastian adds a little bit of blue dye to his mud and then goes around and fixes them. With our transitions, we like them to happen underneath the closed position of the door. So in this case, we ended our tile right underneath where that door would be. And then we rip down a spare piece of flooring that the clients had. And this way, we can kind of just bridge the gap between where that flooring initially ended and where the tile is. We give it a very slight pitch as the floors at, are at slightly different heights. And we just glue it into place. And once this all sets up, we can use a color match silicone to fill the remaining gap. For the LED tape light installation, we're gonna start by just stripping the end of our low voltage cable there, exposing the leads. And then we're gonna strip those and crimp on these butt splices both leads. We're going to take a piece of heat shrink and get that over that cable. Here we used half inch. It's all we had on hand, although three eighths is preferred. It's just a lot less heating you have to do to get a nice solid bond over it. And then once we have those all crimped down, we can heat the heat shrink and have it just tighten over those connections. This here is where the vanity will be. And we're going to just strip a little bit of that Romex, that 14.2, and connect it to our driver as well as the low voltage cable. And this is just a 120 volt to 24 volt DC driver. We test it before shoving the rest of the wire back up through that hole we had drilled through. And then we can take the adhesive off the back of the tape light, bond it to the top of that track, and then cut the diffuser to the length and just push it into place. Later on, of course, we will grout this niche and use the color match silicone to fill any of those corners. With our pot lights, we do like to cut out the majority of them after the ceiling has been finished. It's just a lot easier this way when we have attic access above. We easily fish our wires from hole to hole. And the pot lights we use are just 4 inch with 3 CCT, meaning you can switch the color between 3000, 4000, 5000 K. That way the client can kind of pick lighting later on if they prefer a different mood. Sebastian and I grouting and painting the walls all at the same time because we're just crazy like that. So I'm going ahead here with Laticrete Permacolor for the grout. It's our go-to. Just a really nice grout to work with. It does need to be sealed after installation, but that's okay. Sealing isn't too difficult when you're working with large tiles like these ones. Just getting that in there, giving it time to set up before going back with a very, uh, just barely damp at all sponge getting rid of any excess, letting that set up further, and then hitting it again with a microfiber towel. For any of our trim in the miter department, we are using this two-part CA glue. This one is called Instabond, I believe. So we're just kind of, you know, we, we prep our boards. They're all painted at this point, one coat. We make all our cuts. We go around, glue them up, and just install these pieces of casing as one piece. It makes it really easy this way.
for any change of planes or where two materials meet, for example, the floor register or where the tile meets the hardwood, uh, we are using a color matched silicone. So this is color matched to the grout color. Apply a nice bead of it, spray it with some soapy water, and then hit it with a popsicle stick. The popsicle stick has that nice rounded edge to it, so it just creates a really beautiful finish with all of these beads. For any of these reveals where the tile meets the wall, we're just taking some blue painter's tape, just giving it a little bit of the reveal on that tile profile, getting some Dynaflex in there, and then just kind of smoothing it over with the finger. And then once it's paint ready, you go ahead and smash in here, just hitting it with the same wall paint. And then immediately after taking that blue painter's tape off to get a really nice crisp line. So the vanity came in the wrong color, uh, which is a little unfortunate, but hey, we had it. So we used it just to figure out all the measurements for our electrical and whatnot um, before it got sent back and the right one came. So we had this old one in here, uh, the wrong one that is, and we were able to cut out both the plugs on either side there and then the three wall sconces as well. When we run the electrical for things like this, we just kind of leave excess buried in the stud cavities for the approximate location of each device. That way, once everything's in, we can kind of cut them out at that time and get extremely precise locations for everything. All of these shower fixtures here were by Moen, really good quality stuff here. The shower arm up here was eventually changed to be more of a rain head style and then even getting two body jets which were really nice actually. Uh, so it, it was cool to use these and put them in as I hadn't done them before and uh, pretty good pressure on them actually when you put them on the more uh, more small point section if you will. It's actually not, not too bad. Um, this seemed like a really cool system. These style of tub fillers are always a bit of a pain to install, but having two people makes it a whole lot easier. So we just changed the ends of the pecs here to be the thread adapted style, and then that way the hose lines from the filler can connect to them. We drill three holes through the tile and then drive three number 12 screws into the subfloor through the tile. For the tub, all we're doing here is putting on this brass tailpiece. So we're gonna put that over the drain and then we apply this little silicone lubricant that it, the kit comes with to the tailpiece, lube it all on up and then we can just drop the tub in and that's it. Um, we test it out and then we can just silicone the bottom of the tub where it meets the floor and that's what's gonna hold it in place. And you can see here, just sealing the tile. So with the mosaic, we just kind of go wild. And then with the larger tile, we just take the applicator tool and run it through each grout line to seal all that grout. As you can see here, again, siliconing the bottom of that tub. And then also uh, we like to silicone the bottom of the toilet as well. And there we have it. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you made it this far, if I could ask you maybe to just hit that like button on your way out, that'd be very much appreciated. And if you want to see more of this type of content, hit that subscribe button. If you are located in Mississauga or the surrounding areas and are in need of a renovation, you can also check the description for my website. Go there, submit a form, and hopefully we can work together one day. And you can of course also go in that description and go to my Amazon store page if you are interested in any of the tools or materials that we use for these projects. And for cost, we got about 25,000 changed US and 34,000 in changed Canadian and about 12 days to complete this project. And keep in mind, these are very rough numbers, they're not exact. And even on that, 
These are our numbers. They're no one else's. Okay. Project prices will vary by area, by contractor, by quality of finishes. There's a lot of variables at play here. Anyways, once again, thank you so much for watching, and I hope you have a beautiful day.